The News Hour with Jim Lair has been your trusted source of news for more than 26 years. And this week, for the News Hour Spotlight City series, Channel 9 and the News Hour team have hosted several community forums in the St. Louis area, moderated by News Hour correspondents Paul Salmon, Judy Woodruff, Spencer Michaels, and Gwen Eiffel. Tonight, we're bringing you the Economic Forum in St. Charles County, moderated by the News Hour's Paul Salmon. Hi, everybody. Uh, the first question I wanted to ask is how hard hit is St. Charles County? I mean, by the, by the uh, current recession. Uh, Randy? Yeah. Yeah, obviously, there are um, elements of, of, of what we're seeing in the broader uh, economy. You know, we have a GM plant here in the county, which, uh, you know, I think we're all concerned with what's going on with that. Uh, we have uh, Citigroup uh, as a major employer, if not one of the largest, if not the largest employer in St. Charles County. So, um, so it's certainly um, MasterCard, and uh, those are major employers uh, in, our, uh, in our county, and so uh, there's certainly a lot of concern. Uh, St. Charles has also been um, very focused on the housing uh, market, and, and uh, a lot of what has happened in terms of the boom and the economic prosperity in this county has been tied to housing as well. Are you, are you hit hard by this? I mean, uh, Quillage as a, as a company, we have not, uh, I'd say we got hit harder during the dot-com bubble. <laughs> uh -huh. And so uh, uh, where we're getting hit probably more is um, in terms of how it's affecting our clients, our customers. And we have a pretty broad audience. Uh, our, our market, uh, we have 16 markets throughout the, the country that we focus on. And so we're a little bit more diverse from that perspective. There's definitely feeling pressure. And the other thing that we don't have as much is we don't have as much visibility of what's happening, um, uh, you know, six months out, much less, uh, you know, one month out. And so uh, our customers are letting, uh, at least letting that work uh, out to us in much smaller chunks. So mm -hmm. we don't have as much visibility into the future as we once did. The, is that what's going on here, John? John McGuire, uh, St. Charles uh, Community College? I mean, you're not a profit-making organization, but I mean, how hard hit is the uh, county from your point of view? Well, from our point of view, um, it's not as hard hit, I think, as most of the country, but it still hits us hard. We have a, uh, about just under 40% of our funding is from a local property tax. And for the last 20 years, the assessed valuation has been increasing each year. So even though the tax didn't go up, uh, the revenue did because of new housing and, and, and that value added. Well, this year will be the first year uh, in the last 20 that the assessed valuation will not only not go up, but it will actually go down between 6 and 7 percent. Now that's low compared to what the East Coast and the West Coast has suffered. Uh, but at the same time, uh, like most community colleges, uh, when unemployment goes up uh, and people are unemployed, they go back to school to develop those skills so that when they re-enter the, work, the workforce, they'll re-enter with new skills. Or to hide out from the uh, job market. Right? Yes, that, that as well. And, uh, and it's a good place to hide out. Yes, excellent. It's a productive place to hide out. And so our enrollment that. this semester is up 7.5%. So we're confronted with a 7.5% increase in enrollment and no increase whatsoever uh, in our funding. And so state funding will be level and our local assessed valuation will be level. So that presents a real uh, uh, challenge for us to, to deal with those new students. Uh, hospitals always recession proof, right? Healthcare recession proof. That's what you've always, that's what I've always heard. Um, if you'd asked me that a year ago, I would have said that's correct. Um, that is not accurate today. I think across the country and in St. Charles County, uh, there are clear indications that the economy is affecting healthcare. I think em employers are concerned as ever when they see their health care costs go up seven, eight, nine percent, two or three times what inflation is. That's been going on for 20 years. We've been mm -hmm. able to, to get by with that. But when it comes to individuals um, who may have had their deductibles increase from $250 five years ago to maybe $1,000 now, mm -hmm. who may be concerned about possibly losing their jobs or may not, may not have a job, elective procedures are down significantly. We may be uh, in the beginning stage of a perfect storm. You know, people are putting off preventive or wellness procedures because of the costs associated with it, and also because the individual may believe, I don't have any problem, I, mean, I don't have any indications that would lead me to have to go and get a colonoscopy, so I'm going to put this off. I'd rather spend the money on food for the family or um, gas in my automobile. Hmm. 
So, Brenda Newberry, uh, your business profits? We still have profits? Yes, we still have profits. And, and uh, what we found is that whereas maybe five years ago Citigroup and our MasterCard were some targets of ours, um, with them having their challenges, they're actually resources to acquire our own staff for. We've actually grown from um, 120 to over 150 employees from December to now. And so we're finding growth, but also with, with IT, as, as Randy had pointed out, we're in several markets. We're not just in St. Charles or St. Louis. In fact, less than 5% of our business is in this market. Uh, so what we're finding is that we're growing primarily because when people cut resources, they find ways to automate their processes, and IT is the way to do that. So is IT then recession-proof? I wouldn't say it's recession-proof. We're not growing hardly as We were growing 1,000%. So we are not growing as fast as we were, but uh, in terms of um, opportunity, it's still quite a bit of opportunity. And because our specialty is cybersecurity, um, we actually do get called upon to, to do that work quite often because there's still a, a great risk out in the marketplace. Boy, I think you're going to be flooded here in St. Charles County. If people watch the show, they're going to, going to be the one place in America where... <laughs> where we're hiring? <laughs> well, I'm only, I'm a, I used to grow a thousand percent. Now it's a little less. But <laughs> St. Charles is a very special county. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it's just, this is just a promo for the uh, county. Here. And uh, I promoted your, uh, your un, un, uh, university, of course. Uh, before uh, President Evans, so what about the issue here? I mean, you're you're growing too. Investment income? What? I mean, didn't you lose a fortune in your endowment? Or uh, our endowment went down uh, probably uh, 25 to 35 percent. It fluctuates depending on the market, but uh, we do not uh, rely on operating uh, income uh, on the endowment rather for operating income. We uh, rely entirely on the cash we make uh, from tuition and fees on a regular basis uh, and really have an advantage in a recession because we can work harder during a recession and control our own fate. We don't depend on uh, gifts for operating expenses and uh, we don't depend on an endowment for operating expenses. The endowment is there for a very rainy day, which I hope I'll never see but uh, we don't use it on a regular basis. This isn't a very rainy day, what's going on now? <laughs> it, it's, it hasn't. The, the very rainy day hasn't yet hit higher education. I think it, it, it will probably hit this uh, coming fall when uh, so many of the uh, traditional age students uh, find that uh, one parent or the only parent has lost his or her job and that student now has to drop out or stop out of uh, uh, college for a year or two until things get back to normal. Uh, I think that that, uh, that uh, phenomenon will have a real impact on uh, four-year schools uh, this fall. The uh, community college might not uh, be hit so badly by that because so many of the uh, laid-off workers go back to the community college for retraining and, and uh, uh, more education. The enrollments for the fall are right where they were last spring. Uh, however, it's taking longer for students to make a decision. Uh, when the students decide to enroll, they do so after waiting two or three months longer than they did last year. So that they're worried about whether they can afford to, to come back to school. All right, let's, let's move to the stimulus plan, which is, after all, what's on most people's minds, even if it isn't a burning issue in St. Charles County. Uh, the stimulus issue, the stimulus plan, is it something that you think is important for St. Charles specifically, for the country in general, or maybe not such a good idea? all things considered. You know, certainly the economy needs a jolt or something. Uh, you know, certainly, uh, again, in the auto sector, uh, financials, uh, housing, uh, that's, I think, anything that can do to generate more jobs. Because ultimately, if the jobs are out there, we're not going to have uh, clients that we can then service. And so that's going to be very important. And I think for St. Charles County, uh, you know, things where, where that shovel-ready uh, projects are available out there, I think those things are are, um, are going to be good. So any stimulus that, uh, that, that helps create, and I'll qualify that say, helps create jobs in the private sector, I think are, are very good. And, and I think that's what needs to, to, to happen. Stimulus package, Dave Ross? I think there's opportunities in healthcare to kickstart the entire service line industry. Healthcare, I think, embarrassingly, has been far behind every other industry in terms of trying to modernize and trying to incorporate IT into their daily existence. The goal, at least, is to try to bring healthcare into the 21st century. 
uh, through electronic medical records, um, trying to have greater opportunity to have access to data as quickly as possible. As Brenda was saying, you know, if, if, if we're in some other state or some other country and we get sick, we'd like to feel comfortable that our health history is going to be in that environment, in that emergency department, where time is of the essence. If you have a computer and IT, that can help you make decisions in a very objective manner. And I think when it comes to one's health, I think it is incumbent upon health care providers, health insurers, and employers to work together to have greater access to data to make better decisions. So we're excited about the opportunity. I, I was in St. Louis County, I think it was yesterday, where there's a big initiative to use stimulus money to build a broadband network that ties together the schools, for example, and the public buildings of St. Louis County. And they've, they're making a concerted effort to do that. Are we at a point in our society and our technological development where we where a stimulus investment could have enormous payoffs to the extent that it generates jobs in the private sector um, and when we talk about stimulus one of the things we were discussing was creating a similar broadband that we have in the credit card industry in the healthcare arena and that's going to actually save costs and generate jobs as well and since the Newberry Group concentrates both in the IT and cybersecurity, as we're creating these broadband networks, we need to secure them. And, and, and to the extent that stimulus encourages business investment, that becomes very critical. Um, because a, as was pointed out, we don't want to continue to have an increase in taxes. We want to be able to create jobs and revenue and generate opportunities for people here in the United States that can service the rest of the globe. We don't want to be so shallow and, and focused that we only are supporting the United States. We have to produce goods and services that are needed elsewhere, not just here. And I think we lost that uh, as manufacturing went elsewhere. I think we've got the intellectual capital and the combination of educational institutions and the private sector pulling those students and utilizing those skill sets and employing them will put us in the position to have that intellectual capital that can be used globally. Andy, you were yeah. nodding. Yeah, well, I, yeah, and I think education is a critical piece of this because not only are our jobs going to be important, but also in terms of where are we going to get our workforce and our ability to, uh, to have our youth go into things like math, engineering, technology, and science is going to be critical. And so I think in terms of the, the stimulus package, in terms of what it's doing to help our education system out, uh, as well as uh, jobs, are, are two important things. And so we need to be able to attract and retain quality workforce in the high tech sector. I mean, our average salaries are going to be in that seventy-five to eighty-five thousand dollar range on average. And so those are good paying jobs that then provide a great tax base for everything else. And that's where I come, I'm coming from, from the, you know, the private sector jobs. So you're all talking about making investments now that will pay off in the future and therefore will pay for themselves. That, and certainly you've talked about it with regard to IT. So I, what I'm wondering is this stimulus program, something that looked at from your own local perspective, is making the kind of investment in the future that will pay off and pay for itself? Well, uh, investment in education and investment in uh, job creation uh, certainly have promise for the future. Uh, I think uh, half or more of the uh, uh, stimulus package is uh, um, a, um, an attempt to uh, save a very bad situation from becoming worse. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, a significant amount of money is being directed toward the education sector, toward uh, projects uh, that will create jobs. And uh, that, that, is, that is visionary. Uh, I think uh, earmarks probably are necessary if you're going to have a vision for something that will get people excited but yet there's resistance to earmarks, and that perhaps is slowing down the, uh, the vision that you're looking for. I think that there's going to have to be relaxation in the opposition to earmarks if you're going to generate the kind of uh, excitement and vision that, that you were just referring to. Because a local community will get excited about something that has tangible benefits for it, and that will necessarily be right. an earmark. A, a transportation system, uh, better roads, uh, uh, new school districts, and so forth. But I'm wondering if, if, if the new initiatives, unlike the, the 30s, are, are less tangible, uh, less 
uh, publicly visible, such mm -hmm. as the, the modernizing the electric grid. If we, if we modernize healthcare, and we were talking about uh, the electronic uh, needs to modernize healthcare, all those are, are less tangible, but nonetheless, they're, they're, they're important, powerful uh, developments. And, and the other thing, almost half of the stimulus package was a tax cut. So we have to put that in, in perspective as well. But I think we'll have the, the bridges and the roads. That will certainly be a part of it. But I think some of the other developments, the energy, uh, the grid, the medical, will be less tangible but none less important. I think if you compare today versus the New Deal, the New Deal also had a combination of dollars spent on infrastructure and dollars spent on visionary initiatives. I think that yes, electronic medical records and IT is an opportunity to be visionary, and I think you can combine the two. I mean, there's been a lot of discussion, for example, about high-speed rail. I would say that's both infrastructural and also visionary. And I think that to be successful, you have to look at what can we do to create jobs today and in the future, and how can we improve today and the future, and you need to combine both infrastructure and vision. Well, you bring up an interesting issue, and this is a, something of a hot-button issue in this county, right, which is to say rail, specifically high-speed rail, Metrolink, and this is a county that voted against extending Metrolink to the county initially, right? Uh, there's a little wincing going on here on the panel. Uh, and, and then again voted against uh, uh, tax, uh, raising taxes in order to, uh, for the system itself. That's correct? correct. So uh, why were you wincing? Um, I, it's unfortunate. Is there anybody here on the panel who thinks it was something other than unfortunate? No? It was horrible. Horrible. <laughs> well, the, the well, that's something other than unfortunate. Yeah. Although, again, <laughs> let me say one thing our, our, our county did, is we joined with St. Louis County and St. Uh, Louis City in a, a, a tax that we approved and all three uh, government entities approved to develop a, 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 a trail system of greenways and trails. It's going to be over 600 miles of connected, integrated greenways and trails through the whole St. Louis metropolitan area. And that was where the taxpayers stepped forward and approved the tax for that. So that's not going to help with mass transportation, but you, in terms of looking at infrastructure that improves the quality of our life and, and the wealth of our community. Which, was, which is also very helpful in terms of attracting and retaining talent by having uh, those park systems and trails in place. And so the Katy Trails in particular is one yeah, I'm fond of that yeah, starts yeah. here in St. Charles County and goes across the state. So, To a fair extent, the infrastructure is falling apart. I mean, you look at bridges and roads. But again, in terms of what counties or states or the federal government are going to spend money on, at times there are things that seem to be more important than trying to you know, fix a pothole because the road is still you know, navigable. So I think the stimulus uh, may address some important issues that will position us for long-term growth as well as providing jobs for hopefully thousands and millions of people. What about investment in education? I mean, are we, uh, oh, we've got some questions from the audience, so let me, let me go to them now. Uh, excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, how important is the economic health of St. Louis City to St. Charles and other suburbs? And that gets directly to this issue of Metrolink not supporting it and so forth. So why don't you, who had the strongest reaction to the vote here, you know, uh, take the first uh, A take strong the lead. region is critical. And, and to the extent that St. Louis City is viewed as a strong city, it's going to impact our ability to retain as well as attract talent here, um, whether it be the universities or the infrastructure. And certainly any bridge falling apart is not a good thing. Uh, a bunch of potholes is not a good thing. Um, visitors to the area will say, what separates a thriving metropolitan area from one that's not? And I've had someone jokingly tell me, it's called like mass transit. <laughs> <laughs> and so we uh, absolutely, um, that's critical in terms of the importance to the entire region, the infrastructure, the, the strength of the city, um, as well as the safety of the city. So just because we have businesses in St. Charles and or live in St. Charles, does not mean we do not support the city and do not think that it's critically important for the region. In St. Charles County, we depend on new business coming from St. Louis County and St. Louis City. We can't, uh, well, it would be more difficult to prosper based on our own self-generated business without having commerce with, with the city as well. So this is essential and this underscores the uh, huge judgment error that uh, St. Charles County made when we rejected Metrolink. Obviously, if the city of St. Louis 
and St. Louis County are doing well, that is going to infect St. Charles County. I mean, we are a region. We have to work well together, and I think if one does well or does poorly, it's going to necessarily impact other areas in that same region. Is the local government, this is actually the next question here, is the, is the local government a help or a hindrance uh, in, the, in, the, in these tight economic times? Uh, the state government, the feds, so compare the three. Local, state, federal, who's helping most, do you think, at this point? I would like to think the local helps the most because um, they have a closer pulse on what the needs of that um, economy in that area are. I think it's, um, it's more difficult to rely upon the federal government who have lots of priorities. Uh, the local government's priorities should be the locale. Sure, but, but is it more of a help or a hindrance at this point? Uh, I would say the local government actually has been very supportive in terms of the growth of St. Charles County. In fact, I would say, the, and I've only been in St. Charles County for six years, but I would say that St. Charles County has grown because of the vision of some of the leaders and because of the ability of business people and the local government to work together. So it used to be, you know, when I started my business in 92, the big concern was you had this thing called the Missouri River separating St. Charles County from St. Louis County. And uh, that was a major concern. Here I am uh, in my business. I, I'm very fortunate that I'm, I always tell everybody I'm two blocks from my grade school, three blocks from my in-laws. That's why I'm in St. Charles County. <laughs> uh, but that was a real concern when starting a business in St. Charles was that, you know, people from uh, the St. Louis region uh, just, you know, kind of felt we were out on, in farmland out in St. Charles County. And so uh, I think the local uh, politicians uh, and the local um, have really uh, done a great job uh, recently and, and over the last several years of reaching out to the St. Louis uh, County and St. Louis City and that just wasn't the case years ago and so uh, there's been a lot more regionalism and, and I think Brenda had, had kind of uh, stated that earlier uh, uh, in the last several years than what we've had uh, say in the, you know 20 years ago or 15 years ago. Anybody have anything to add here? Add yeah, yeah. Quick. I think all three are important. Our Economic Development Council, our EDC, uh, they provide a lot of, of small business uh, fixed assets. That's buildings and equipment loans for business, one of the leading ones in the country. And they were one of the first to uh, work with the stimulus plan, uh, Obama's plan, to uh, reduce the cost to the small businesses for those loans. And as a result, those loans are increasing right now. So I think we have leaders in place who have been able to work effectively with the state and especially the federal government on the stimulus money. So I think uh, we've been well positioned, well served. You know, the, one of the next question here gets to this issue that we were talking about earlier of investments for the future, and it's one of the key things that President Obama has talked about with regard to the stimulus plan, but how specifically can alternative energy companies realize the benefit of locating plants and jobs in the St. Louis region, and something that where IT can play an enormous role, and in St. Louis County they're, they're actually doing something where they're monitoring all the, the, the county buildings, all the buildings that are owned by St. Louis County, and adjusting the heat in them through a central IT location uh, so people aren't there for the weekend, heat down, but not down too far so that the pipes will crack or something like that. It, so that's, that seems like it's an important part of what's going on. Uh, Brenda Newberry, yes, no? Yes it, yes, it is an important part. And as you said, both um, from an IT and engineering perspective, uh, Randy pointed out, we, working with the universities, uh, increasing the number of students that are interested in the maths and sciences, that is going to create jobs. The alternative industry um, um, energy is a way in which we're going to be able to provide services as well as product for global institutions. After all, a community college can be quite specific with regard right. to uh, solar panel installation, yeah. for example. Yeah, so. and, and, you know, our area doesn't have the wind and we don't always have the sun, but what we have is the technology. So yes, we have strong enrollment in science and in technology uh, in our uh, IT and, and uh, computer science programs, those are strong. So that's the part of uh, alternative energy that I think is strongest in this area, as well as, as biomedical. Those are the strong areas. Uh, how about here at Lindenwood? Uh, alternative energy, is there a focus, uh, increased focus? We have uh, hired three scientists for our faculty over the past uh, three years <clears throat> with a very strong emphasis on environmental science and a particular emphasis in uh, uh, green developments, green uh, businesses, and uh, a lot of our biology courses now uh, have a section 
on uh, green development and uh, environmental science. And we, we uh, also have a campus out in De Defiance uh, that's very much a pristine uh, frontier area with some woods and a lot of our biology experiments out there are on environmental science. So yes, the, the, the emphasis on that is increasing at Lindenwood University. Let me just ask one quick question. We're just about out of time, but just so quick answers, lightning round, if you will. What are you or can you be doing to create jobs uh, here in St. Charles County at this point? Providing a, tra uh, a trained, well-educated workforce. That's fundamentally important. And uh, that's exactly what you, would, you were asking for <laughs> about 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, we need, we need to be able to attract and retain talent and uh, things like alternative energy, much like it uh, fueled, uh, IT fueled the job market back in the, uh, you know, back 10 years ago. I think that that has the potential to get our youth excited about math, engineering, technology, and science, and so that's a good thing. Okay, uh, Dave? Actually, quite simply, we're trying to fulfill our mission. Our mission is to improve the health of the people and communities we serve, so looking at ways to expand services, whether it's cancer or cardiology, um, neurology, thor thoracic surgery, there are opportunities to continue to grow and meet the needs of the baby boomers who are aging. So, Brenda Newberry. Providing services in particular related to technology that will support the um, new initiatives, the stimulus, and also provide opportunities to, um, to give those products and services other countries, not just within the United States, but certainly fueling the U.S. economy, hiring U.S. citizens. Uh, Lindenwood has uh, continued to establish branch campuses around the St. Louis region, mm -hmm. uh, mainly evening school, so that uh, people can come back for continuing education and advancement of their credentials. And we also make uh, higher education affordable through a variety of grants uh, from the university. And uh, we think that will have a, a great positive impact on the local workforce. And we also emphasize teaching of math and science in our uh, teacher education programs. Very good. Well, thank you, uh, Jim Evans, Brenda Newberry, uh, Dave Ross, Randy Schilling, John McGuire. Thank you all. Thanks to the audience for your questions. Uh, thanks to the viewers for watching.